it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a poncho. Now this poncho is very easy to make and I love wearing it. It is really lovely and warm. Now for this project I am using a very special yarn. It's by Wendy and it's called Knits Recycled and it is made from recycled plastic bottles. So they've taken some rubbish and turned it into yarn. It is just exquisite. It feels so soft. It's just amazing. So it is a super chunky and they've made it into quite a few colors. So there's eight colors in all, four plain ones and oh my goodness they are to die for they're all that sort of muted oh lovely colors and then there's four speckled ones as well so make sure you have a look at those on our website it is just amazing now the thing is i was given this opportunity to try out this yarn at the show that we went to a couple of months ago now and it's just such an opportunity. I have been playing with this yarn, feeling it, using it. It is wonderful. So I had to make a quick decision back then because they said, which color would you like? And of course, I sort of went for the safest color almost. But this color is such a lovely charcoal gray. It's wonderful. So here it says shade number KR04, dye lot 04. So um, yeah, check out the colours. They are just lovely. Now, on the back, it does have some special instructions, of course, because this is a very special yarn. So it is hand wash only and uh, you need to dry it flat. So make sure you do that because all the other symbols are yeah <laughs> crossed out so the um i don't know whether you can see that there we go it's focused so it should be an eight millimeter hook i am using a 10 the eight will give you a nice fabric but i want a loose lacy fabric so you know how we do that if we want it nice and loose and lacy, we go up a hook size. So I'm using my 10 millimeter higher, higher hook. And I have to say it's worked out perfectly. So what you also will need, of course, is a darning needle, your scissors and a tape measure. Because for this poncho, we are going to make two panels, identical ones. And they have to have a particular size. So make sure you can measure that. For this poncho, I used six balls of this yarn and that even gave me some leftovers. So if you wanted to make one and you need to make it bigger, six balls will be enough. OK, so let's get started. First of all, let's remove this ball band here. Carefully. Then we take out the yarn and it's not wound as what we're used to, but it does feel really nice and soft and it's easy to work with. So let's get started by making a slip knot. Insert your hook and we're going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So then you count back to the fifth chain. So one, two, three, four, five. In there, you're going to do a treble, a chain, and a treble. So a treble is yarn over twice into that chain. So pick up two strands, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So that's our treble. Then we do a chain, 
then we do another treble into that same chain here so into the same location pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two so basically we've made a v and now we are going to place another treble in the last chain so let me get some yarn out first yarn over twice into the last chain again i do try and pick up those two strands and you pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and this is our first little tile done now these are the stitches that we will be making in every little tile so now we are going to chain seven one two three four, five, six, and seven. Into the fifth one, you're going to do your little V of two trebles and a chain. So one, two, three, four, five, yarn over twice into the fifth one. And you do your treble crochet, one chain. and another treble crochet in the same location. There we go. And then you're going to do another treble in the last chain. So the first chain that you did, there we go. Two. There we are, voila. And now we are going to have to connect it to this one. So we flip this one over and it's a matter of finding your locations here. So I always put my slip stitch into this loop here that I see. So that's like that first V from that treble that you did here. So this is where I put my slip stitch. If you want to put it in there, that's fine as well. But I just thought this was a good location. So this is our first little tile done of our second row so now we are going to do another tile on top of this one here for that we are going to chain three now we are going to do our treble chain treble around this chain here so we do that And you work around the chain of the tile below. And part of our tile is, of course, another treble. Now, we really want to carefully see where we are going to place it. And I really want to go into that chain there. So skipping just the one chain, here is one as well. Try to get into that so that things stay into place. That's why I am doing that. There we go. See, and we have finished row two. So to start the next row, we are going to chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So each row you start with seven chains. Then you do your little V in the fifth chain, one, two, three, four, five, in here. And you do your two trebles with a chain in between. There we go. That's my second treble. And yes, I mean, working with a big hook like this, you need to take some time to get used to it. Then your treble in the last chain. Again, try to really yeah, pick up your chain there. Pick up the two strands of it. There we go. Okay, so we've done our little tile. Now we flip this over. And we find that location on top of that 
well that's what it looks like to me of that second treble there okay and you do your slip stitch now we are in the row and that means we do three chains and we do our trebles or our V around the chain here. There we go. And now we do our treble and yeah, I try to yeah, go into that chain just so that it's secured and the lid doesn't slide about and then we look for that location here and we're doing a slip stitch and this is how you will do every row and of course this will get longer and longer because you will be making more and more tiles in the middle of your row every row you finish with a tile like this and then you do your seven chains you do your tile and then you flip it to connect it. So now I would do exactly the same as before. Seven chains, do my tile, flip, connect and then do my little tiles. So this is the increasing that you will be doing for about 12 rows. So one, two, three and so on. And by this time, your yarn ball should be finished. So I will be back when mine is finished. So I have just made it to the end of my first ball. I have counted and I have 12 rows here on the side and 12 here on the other side, which is exactly the same as in my first panel. So that is good news. What is also good news is that I finished in the middle of a row in the first panel as well. So again, perfect. So now to start the second ball here, and then we will be doing maintaining rows. So not increasing, just keeping the same width for the length of this ball. So let me find the end. Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> and to be honest, what I do, yeah, I just, <clears throat> it does, trail off a little bit like this the yarn so I sort of leave a longer end than you would normally and I just knot it together and then I will deal with that when I have crocheted over it there we go see I'm just going to leave it hanging out I'm going to crochet over that leave these ends hanging out and I will deal with those later so as you can see here, I finished right before that last treble crochet. So let's just do that one. See, and my knot remained at the back there. So that's a good location for it to be. And so, yeah, so I'm going to finish this row. So I'm just doing the tile, which is located next to this last tile there of my previous row. There we go. And normally you would now be slip stitching, obviously, and then doing another chain three and then doing another tile on top of here right so this would then be your last tile of the row but we are not going to be increasing anymore so this is going to be a corner of our panel and so now we need to work our way to here so we can start doing our row going back so what i do i take my hook I put my yarn around it so my yarn comes from the sort of the right direction. I turn my panel and I am going to slip stitch four stitches back to this corner here. So into there and don't do them tightly because otherwise you bring it all together. Make sure they're lying nicely on the surface of those stitches here. Picking up two strands 
nicely going into the stitches so that's three and then here the last one into there there we go and four so i've done my four slip stitches these bring me back to the corner here and turning my panel this way i am now just ready to do a chain three and my tile so one two three so there's no need to do the seven because of course the seven means that we will be increasing and we don't need to do that so this will be the side where i'm going to keep on doing that on the other side when i reach the end of this row i will do what we have been used to doing the seven and creating another row and another tile because of course we are making a rectangle and we are maintaining our rows at the moment so we're maintaining the amount of tiles that we're doing in the row so here we're not increasing but we will be increasing on the other side of our row so that way we maintain the amount of tiles that we do in this row So I am now nearly at the end of this row. So I am on the other side from where we did that first decrease, basically. So here we are just going to keep on doing our normal ends and beginning of the row. So that means we are doing a tile on top of that last tile, which I'm doing here. And then we start a new row by just doing that chain seven and, you know, putting our stitches on that and then turning. See, there we go. And so for the length of this ball, six and seven, sorry, I had to count there. Uh, for the length of this ball, that's what we will be doing. So here we do the normal ones when I get back to below the, here. This is where I will not be increasing, but I will be doing that for slip stitches. And I will be doing that for seven rows. And that's what I did on my previous panel. So hopefully by the time I have done my seven rows, that will be the end of this ball here. But I am checking it. I am sort of comparing to see where I ended um, on that other panel and just making sure that it is the same. But it worked out for that first ball. So I am very hopeful it will work out for this ball as well. So there we go. So good luck. And I will be back when I have finished this ball of yarn. Okay, so once again, I have come to the end of my ball here. Now, of course, I am keeping an eye on how big this is, and it's exactly the same size as my first panel. So I have counted 12 tiles high here and 19 wide. And so, yes, I came here from where I didn't increase or where I just maintained. Now I'm here, I have to add another ball. And then when I get here, this is my 19th tile. So I don't want to make it any wider because then it's not the same as my first panel or it's not the width I need. So I will be showing you how to make sure that you do not increase here. I've made it to the end of my row here and I am just doing that tile next to this last one here and while before when we were using the first ball our rows became longer and longer because we were increasing on both the sides just now we were doing the middle of the rectangle with the second ball and 
our row stayed the same length. Now we are going to start making shorter and shorter rows. So that will then create this space here, will then be filled up shorter and shorter rows, and that will create that corner of that rectangle to turn this shape into a rectangle, of course. So again, we are going to be turning here. And so now, before we were doing this little trick just on one side here, now we will be doing that on both the sides. So I'm going to be doing my four chains along the side here into those stitches. And now we're going to be doing those three chains and then continuing with making our tiles. So there won't be any more chaining seven here from now on because obviously we are doing the decreasing everywhere. So we are not creating extra tiles. And you will soon notice that your rows are getting shorter and shorter. kind of the highest I can go so as you can see there is my rectangle finished and then here that is what we're going to be filling in and then look as you can see here look there we go so that's where I am working right now so I will be back when I finish my rectangle I'm just doing my slip stitches ready to start that last tile because at the moment I have this left to do. And of course, this is my second rectangle. So you need two rectangles, identical ones, preferably. So here we go. Yep, a last slip stitch. There we go. So that is the end of this one. So I have measured my panel. Unfortunately, it does not fit in the camera. And the width is 85 centimeters or 34 inches. The height is 50 centimeters or 19 and a half inches. So what I did, I used one ball for the increases here. Then I used another ball for my maintaining rows. And then I started another ball for my decreases. For my increases to start with, I did 12 rows and then my yarn finished. Then I did my maintaining and I did seven rows of that and then my yarn finished. And then I started the third ball and I started decreasing. And then I did about 11 rows. So it depends on where you finish here, of course, and whether you count this as being your maintain or your, you know, increase or decrease row so uh, it depends where you were in the row but as long as it's a nice rectangle that is what you need so make sure you can repeat this so now i'm going to get started on the second one okay let me show you how to crochet these two rectangles together okay so we have two rectangles same size and you're going to lay them like this so one is like this and then you're going to take the other one and you're going to sew that one or crochet that one on to there so you're going to match up the blue here 
This is the side of one of the rectangles along the longer side on one side. Then you're going to do the same thing. So you've got to imagine that this is still attached. Then you take this part and you attach it to this part like so. So basically you're doing the same thing, but in the other direction. But of course, by that time, these two are already also attached. And here, this will be your neck opening and you will have a poncho. <laughs> Take a picture or a screenshot of this and that will remind you of how to do it. So we're going to get started with the first rectangle. This is the side that we will be attaching. So bottom right hand. And then I'm going to take my second rectangle and I'm going to take the narrow side and attach it there. Okay, so I have my panels laying here like this. And so now we are going to be crocheting them together here where the blue line is. So I'm going to get started with my slip knot. Now I'm going to do this in quite a, how should I say, it, rudimentary way, um, sort of with that same like industrial look. And um, I'm thinking maybe you can wear it with the seam on the outside or with the seam on the inside to have that sort of more sleek look. But if you have the seam on the outside, it makes quite a nice feature. Anyway, that's what I think, okay? But it's really easy to put together. So slip knot in with your hook. And then here I've got my two ends and I'm going to insert into this panel and this panel but you've got to find a good location so you want to make sure yeah this hole will be okay so you might want to make sure that the hole that you're going to use is not going to expand and then here as well sort of that same kind of what do we think yeah in there possibly yeah okay and then we are going to do a single crochet like that and just pull it really tight just for that first one, just so that you have secured it really well. Of course, all these ends will have to be sewn in later. Then I'm going to do three chains, one, two, and three. And then I'm going to go and find the location where my first tile ends. So here, in between here, this is where the next tile starts. So this is a location. And then here, in between about there, I'm going to go into there because those are the locations that I'm going to be using. They are at the end of those tiles, look. And then your chain lies along. So three chains, one, two and three. And then again, I'm going to go in here. Yeah, so past all the items for that tile. Past here. Yeah. And make sure you um, tighten that single crochet to the extent that it will keep it together. But obviously that it's not going to kinch it together. But so that you can, you know, be sure that they are well attached. But also still making sure that you can have your panels lying flat like this. Okay, so I've done my three chains. Let me go and find the location here and there. And I'm going to do my single crochet. One, two, three. And in here and then. This takes a little bit of time but like I said, it's the really easy way of assembling your poncho now. And of course, you're going to have to do the same thing. So we're doing this blue one here now. And so you're going to have to do the same thing with these two here. So then you will have to position your two panels like so. 
and do the same thing here. Also starting from the outside, right? So you start from the outside and then this here will become your neck opening. And that should be just about the size that you need. So there we go. And of course, you are going to end with a good strong single crochet at the end of the panel. And of course, you'll have to sew in all your ends. I've loved working with this yarn. Oh my goodness. So nice to work with a special yarn for a change. <laughs> there we go. In here, just seeing where. And of course, yeah, look, the colors are really strange in my viewfinder because of the overwhelming gray color of my poncho. Oh, I'm nearly there. So in between those two tiles, yeah. Picking it up, one, two, and three. And then here, like I said, the last one, I am going to go into that chain so my single crochet doesn't move. And then here, where do I have to go into? Uh, just about there, I'm just gonna go into there. That should be okay. There we go. And now, if you look at it, you will be able to see Look, the chain lying across. And to be honest, I I don't mind that look. I really like that. It's sort of a little feature. But if you turn it over, um, <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> Which one is it? This one here. You can't even see where it is. So I think that's quite a good way. Is it here? Yes, this is the one. Look, I think it just continues. So that's a really nice way of putting them together. You can't see it on one side. So yeah, magic. <laughs> so now we're going to do the second part of our assembly. So where the orange line is, we are going to attach that to the narrow side of the other rectangle. So make your second join where the orange lines are. And of course, you've got your blue join already to your right. And then, of course, it will be time to sew in the ends and start wearing your poncho. So if you are interested in buying this yarn, please do follow the link that you will find in the description box to our website where you can find this yarn. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!